Hello everyone, I'm Matt Evans and welcome to Board Game Replay. In this series, we're going to be joining our group of friends just after we finish playing a game. We're going to be sitting down for a post-game discussion, we're going to talk about various elements of the game, and then we're actually going to be cutting back to replays of moments that we found fun or exciting. So today we're going to be playing Shadowrun Crossfire, which is a 1-4 player cooperative deck building game from Catalyst Game Labs. Now I'm going to dive into the rules and give you a quick overview of how this game works, but I know some of you out there might already know this information, you don't need me to go through it again. So for those of you who already know the rules of this game and you don't need an overview, I'm going to put an annotation right up here. You can click on that and skip right to the main video. Okay, so in this game, each player is going to be taking on the role of a runner in the world of Shadowrun. Now if you're not familiar with the setting, Shadowrun Universe is an RPG universe. It's a really cool cyberpunk, futuristic world, and it has a lot of really unique elements that it kind of combines like hacking, cybernetics, along with magic and fantasy at the same time. And admittedly, I don't know a lot about this world, I didn't know a lot about it before coming into this game, but there's a dwarf firing machine gun on the box, just, just to give you an idea, and that's just cool. <laughs> anyway, so before I get into the rules, I just want to mention that this game comes with a couple of different scenarios in the box, as well as a few online that you can download as a bonus. And these scenarios are, are basically, uh, they change the flow of the game between one another, they do different thematic things, but for the most part, the core mechanical elements in those scenarios is the same. But today we're going to be just explaining the crossfire scenario. It's kind of the main scenario in the game. Um, it's the one that we've played the most of, and that's what we're going to be playing today as well. So I'm going to cover the crossfire scenario, and honestly, if you know how to play the crossfire scenario, you'll, you'll know how to, how to play just about any of the other ones without much explanation. All right, so at the start of the game, each player is going to choose from one of four different roles to play as. Depending which role they choose, it's going to affect what their starting deck is composed of. Now, every starting deck consists of seven predetermined cards, but depending on which class or um, role you pick, you're going to get a different distribution. Basically, uh, for example, the face roll here, if you're playing as the face, you get four red cards, which are skill cards, and one of the, each of the other types of cards in the game. Um, there are red cards, which are skills, blue cards, which are spells, black cards, which are weapons, and green cards, which are hacking. And as you can see, those are the same colors of these different roles. So if I'm playing as the street samurai, I start with four weapon cards and then one of the other three as well. So that's basically the way the roles work in this game. Now most importantly, at this point, you're going to be choosing one of your characters, you're going to be choosing a race that you're going to carry permanently throughout the game. You're going to be able to level up this character, gain new skills and abilities as time goes on. So I'll put one up on the screen here. This is the dwarf, and uh, this is that dwarf with that machine gun I was talking about. So cool. Now all the races in the game have the same stats, the, the ones that come in the box, but basically they just have different art on them. So there's a female version of the dwarf that comes in the box as well, but she has the same stats. Now, if you look before, below the dwarf name there, you've got a five, and that represents the starting hit points. And then below that is the starting cards in their hand. And below that is the starting new yen, or the money in this game. And that's basically it. And now you'll notice to the left there, there's some slots, and those are for unlocked skills and abilities. But I'm going to get to those a little bit later. Now, once each player has chosen their characters and drawn their starting hand for the game, we're going to get started with what's called the first scene. Now, this crossfire scenario is played over three different scenes, and if we can complete three scenes without having any of our runners go critical, or basically die, then we're going to win the game. Now, the way this works is the first scene of the game, we're going to deal out one obstacle for each player in the game. That's the way the crossfire scenario works. And the way we complete a scene is to defeat all the obstacles that are on the board in front of all the runners. Once we do that, the scene is over, and we move on to the second scene. And each scene gets a little bit harder than the previous one because we start drawing um, more and more obstacles with each subsequent scene. All right, now to explain how you damage obstacles in this game, I'm just going to uh, start a basic round. And the first thing we're going to do to start a round is we're going to draw what's called a crossfire card. And these are basically just nasty things that do terrible stuff to us throughout the course of a round. So this one here, this pure chaos card says the attack strength of each red obstacle is increased by one. We have one red obstacle on the board, that means it's going to be a little bit stronger. And that symbol next to it means this lasts for the entire round. And this other symbol at the bottom is 4 plus. This represents what would happen if we had been at the crossfire level 4. Now, once we finished a round, basically since I'm starting the game, once it gets back to me, we're going to discard this card. And it's going to go in a special crossfire discard pile. And as we discard future crossfire cards, we're going to keep piling up. And with each one in the discard pile, that is the new crossfire level. So eventually you're going to start drawing crossfire cards that have really nasty secondary abilities as well. The way you prevent that is defeating all the obstacles before you finish a round. So you won't always get through, you'll rarely get through an entire round without at least one or two crossfire cards coming out, but that's why there's this constant pressure in the game to, to work together and, and get things destroyed as quickly as possible. So how do we do that? Let's say my turn is beginning here. 
I've got five cards in hand because I play the orc, and the orc, that's kind of his whole specialty. He starts with a ton of cards. Now, this is like this, imagine this is like this big brawl going on, and we're all working together. So even though we've got these obstacles facing our individual characters, I can attack anyone I want on the board here and help do damage to them. So as an example, I'm going to pick this troll mage over here because this guy's particularly nasty. I'm going to pull him in front of me just for the sake of, of the video here so I can see it better. But now you'll notice at the top here, he's got these different numbers and symbols, and that represents the damage that he needs to take. And each one of them is divided by a little tier, and that means as long as he's taken that much damage uh, during a single turn, then that tier is going to be basically permanently um, blocked. And you're going to use this damage marker to represent uh, these different obstacles taking damage. So this guy in front of me, he's got that three there. That three represents just three damage from any source any colors, it doesn't matter. Now, I explained earlier the four different types of damage there are in the game and the four different colors. And basically, that just means it can be three of the same color, it can be one of each color, it doesn't matter. And that gun symbol just means that that's a single, a single weapon symbol will overcome that tier. So as an example, I'm going, to, I'm going to play some cards here. I've got a lot of cards in my hands, so I'm going to play them. Um, one interesting rule of this game, it's not going to have a huge effect right now, is that when you do play cards, you play them all at once, uh, to any number of obstacles you want, and then at the very end, once you've played all your cards, then you resolve the damage. Again, that doesn't make a huge difference now, but I'll, I'll kind of explain it to you a little bit. So I'm going to play one, two, three uh, black damage cards, or weapon damage cards, and then a fourth damage of, of mana here, of blue. And the reason I played that is, obviously, I only needed three generic damage to overcome this first tier. And... If you were looking at the order that I played them in, you'd think I was being wasteful. Well, why'd you play the black ones to do the generic damage when you just need a gun symbol for the fourth damage? That's basically what I'm saying. Is if I look down at this now, I've done a, to a total of four damage, and that four damage included a gun symbol as well. So I'm going to be able to just cross both of those tiers off. Now, that may be a little confusing, but that's kind of the way that we've played this. It's, it's an easier way for our minds to wrap around it, where we just count out the total number of damage that needs to be done, and then say, okay, I've done eight damage. How many damage symbols? Do you have enough blue symbols, black symbols, red symbols, etc.? So that's basically damaging this target. I've dealt two tiers of damage to him. Now the next thing I do in my turn, I discard the cards that I played, and I'm going to, I'm basically going to take them and apply damage. First of all, I'm going to slide this guy back over here. Now what apply damage means is any obstacles that are facing you that you haven't defeated at the end of your individual turn are going to hit you and damage you. So this guy here, this Elf Blade Master, I started the game at 6 health. He's going to damage me for 2 because he's got a strength of 2 here at the bottom uh, right corner. And then we're going to go on, and I'm going to then, uh, I have less than or equal to 3 cards in my hand, so I'm going to draw 2. That's just the basic rule of drawing in the game. And then I'm going to get an opportunity to buy from the black market. Now, this might be a bad example because the Orc starts the game with basically no money, starts with only 1 money. But basically, this would be an opportunity for me to buy anything I want from this black market. And actually, you know what? I have one. I'll spend one just as an example. I'll spend one and I'll buy this additional mark card, which is like kind of a starter card. Now, the interesting part is when you buy things in this game, they don't go into your discard pile like a traditional deck builder. They go straight into your hand. So just like a, a lot of other deck builders, once you've bought a card from here, it's immediately replaced with another card. And that would be the end of my turn, and we'd go on to the next player. So we're just going to continue around the board trying to defeat these obstacles in front of us. And oh, I, one thing I forgot to mention is when you do defeat an obstacle, let's look at that troll mage again. He's worth 11 new yen or 11 money when you defeat him. And whomever deals the final blow, they basically, you start dealing out money clockwise until you've hit 11. So you'd start with one player, go to the next player, all the way around until you've, you've hit a total of 11 uh, money distributed. So it's very important to kill those, those high value targets quickly so you can get some money in your hands, buy some new cards, get them into your deck, and that sort of thing. But there's not a whole lot out here. I'll, I'll probably save some of the real cool combos for maybe some replays that we shoot today. But that's the basic concept of the game. You're going to be playing cards with these different icon symbols on them to try and deal damage to these objectives. The interesting part comes when you start buying cards with assist abilities. Uh, for example, this, this Dock Wagon card here that's in the marketplace. This has the ability to basically, on your turn, you can use it to heal a single runner for two hit points. Or, if it has an assist ability, you can completely play that right out of turn. So at the bottom it says, choose a runner. That runner heals a hit point, but they also gain an additional... Uh, red damage that they can apply to whatever they want during that turn. So that's a really interesting um, assist mechanic. Uh, there's also this covering fire assist here, and this basically has its complete its its own ability. It has a it has two damage, as a gun damage and a generic one. Choose a runner that runner heals a hit point. That's a pretty good ability. 
but I have to play it during my turn. The assist ability, I can play at any time. I can basically just say, choose an obstacle, it can attack this turn, and that player gains a black damage that they can use. So right here where I was about to get hit by that Elf Blademaster, if any other player on the board had this card, they could have played it, froze that obstacle basically, so he can't hit me for this turn, and I could deal additional gun damage to something else. So it's really interesting the way that assist stuff works out. Now I showed you a little bit about taking damage in this game. There are basically two states that you can get into as a character once you've taken too much damage. Um, once you've taken enough damage to knock you into what's called the staggered level, your character basically loses their entire hand of cards, you just shuffle all your cards back together, including your discard pile, and you are just about to die. Basically any more damage that hits you, you're, you go critical, and the game goes into like this emergency abort round, which I won't explain, but I'll just tell you that it's insanely hard. It's, it's ridiculous. You basically just try to survive and run away for a little bit of experience from the fight. So that should cover the majority of the mechanical components of the game. I mean, there's a lot more things that can happen with card combos and things like that, but I'm going to save that for either our replays or for you to kind of experience on your own if you check this game out. But uh, the last thing I want to mention is one of the coolest parts of this game is the character progression. Now, I showed you that character sheet at the beginning that had those four empty spaces, and those spaces represent these stickers. I'll show you those too. Uh, those stickers you can basically place on your character sheet once you reach those different levels of experience, or as this game calls it, karma. So if you look at this character sheet I put up in front of you, uh, this character, he's got 21 karma, so he's un and he's got uh, 15 karma worth of unlocks on his character. And he's clearly banking some of those karma to buy new things. So as you get different, uh, as, as you get more and more karma, you can unlock new abilities. You can replace your old abilities with more valuable abilities, and these really change the nature of the game. You know, at the start of the game, you're just you're. It's very difficult to to overcome and to win a game. But once you've got a few upgrades, the game does become a little bit easier. So because of that, the game has built-in rules for scaling the difficulty up. What makes this interesting is you are getting a more difficult game each time you step it up like that, but at the same time you have more tactical choices and more powerful abilities available to you, so it really keeps things interesting throughout. Alright, I could keep talking about this game, but why don't we just get down to it and start playing. We're going to jump into this and we'll get back to you in just a bit. South Shadow on Crossfire. We won. We won. Woo. Hooray! That's a rarity around here. <laughs> Winning this game is a rare thing. Yeah. And with that, I've got the marker. Hooray! We can, we can all level up oh. a little bit. The marker of justice. I was passing that to Michelle, but whatever. No way, man. One. Me first. You get three, right? It has Two. Three. How many did you get? Yay! We got, we got three karma for that because we ran a. We're playing the Crossfire scenario. And these guys have less than 10 karma uh, in upgrades already, so they're going to get three from that. Jeremy and I, are I was running that with 15 karma, and he also had 15 karma, so we only get two. Uh, so I'll just mark this off real quick here. That gets here. me my first slot. Yes, oh, boy. Indeed. Do you know what you're going to pick? Um, I was flipping through these a little bit. In the interest of playing a cooperative game and helping the team and not just myself, Yeah. I'm actually going to take Shopping Agent. Nice. That makes the that's the the deck that name. increases the size of the black market by one card. That's awesome. Oh uh, yes. Wow. Uh, and that ties in nicely to your ability. Yeah. I also have prep work, which at the start of the game, uh, you can buy a card. I pay the cost normally, and then it goes into my hand, which is really good because I have five starting gold, and my hand is normally only two. So, and you get to start the game buying a card. Now the black market deck is going to be one bigger at the beginning, just giving us one more choice. And as far as I know. The rest of that's only a five experience or a five karma ability. We can all end up taking something like that and just making this massive black market deck. So whenever, yep. like, whenever this game affects that cycle of black market deck, we're just gonna have a ton more choices. That's cool. Yeah. That'd be nice. So what do you guys think? First of all, what do you guys think about the theme? I, I've I didn't know anything about the Shadowrun aside from like what I had heard on like a couple different podcasts about the RPG. Yeah. But what did you guys think about the theme so far? Uh, honest answer or nice answer? <laughs> Whatever you want. If we're asking you a question. Okay. It has no consequence on me at all. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's it fine. It doesn't lay it on. To, like, there's nothing that really... It's not... It's not... It's nice color, but it's not necessary. You, you make a good point about the universe, though, I think, Michelle, in that... I think maybe... 
Like, the way the theme is presented, you're like, whoa, Shadowrun Crossfire, it's this huge game in the Shadowrun universe, which we didn't really know anything about, so we're just like, oh, cool, there's some guys in these yeah. cards that are blue, and they, like, this guy's a mage, like, that's awesome. The, the art and the theme is, like, awesome, and it's there, yeah. but I have no idea how it relates right. to the world. And I don't need to know more, but I still really enjoy it. Yeah. It lends to great art, and if you want to get into it, I mean, there's story right out of the box, too. I mean, you can yeah. read, read up and read into it and get, like... A nice flavor of the universe. If you're really yeah. into that, I mean, we're a lot. It, we're more interested in gameplay anyway. So this is more getting down and dirty and getting right yeah. into the game is more of our style. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't. I don't see any of us reading it, but it's there if you want it. Yeah, yeah. So aside from theme, what do you guys think about the cooperative element of this game? I mean, we've played this a lot, obviously. So I know you guys like yeah. the game, but spot on. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. spot on. I think the difficulty is very, is right on to it's it's definitely randomized and but it's it's we've lost like a few games now. We've had to abort mm -hmm. and we even failed an abort yeah. mission. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's like generally if you get to abort, you're probably gonna lose anyway. It's yeah. it's wrong. You're not destined to, uh, to lose like a lot over and over and over again, but you you really have to think hard. That's the every point. single time. You can't just blow through it and yeah. get the points, and yeah. then you're all over with. I think that's a really good point. Is that okay. like I don't think the the difficulty of this game is high. Like this is not an easy game by any means. But to your point, you get better at it as you play. You really sit sure. down and think. You're like, oh well, I have two generic objectives of my own. I should just play it. But then if you look over there, you can maybe take off one that this person can't have and that person can't have. And yeah, it's cool. I go. I play like Isaac in this game. <laughs> It's a compliment. I don't believe when we play <laughs> uh, competitive Thanks. games, yes, I think that we have seen that Isaac is a very calculated player. It can sometimes take a while to execute a turn. I will freely admit I'm the first person to be like, "Just do it, mother." <laughs> um, but sure. in this game. I think that we found that that role was reversed at least on one or two very specific points between you and I, where I was full in my head trying to do things, and you just wanted me to take my damn turn. Okay. What I would like to do and the reasons why I would like to do it. Okay. All right, follow us. And Continue on. Right. <laughs> uh, in a perfect world, I would do killing to the Aztlan veteran who's in front of me. Yep. Our world is not perfect. I'm not going to waste my sniper rifle on a gun damage in the middle. Yeah, uh, that's a good, oh, good choice. I, I don't have any way to so, help you. So, one, two... Play it over by my cards or near of it or something. Yeah. So I, would, uh, I would love to think it out first. Sure. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total damage. Two of which has to be red, one of which has to be green. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm going to play, say, one, two, an icon grab. Uh, I've played another hacking card, so that's going to grab a face. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That takes care of the, wait, yeah, the yeah. qualification for five damage, two faces, and a green. Awesome. How many did I need total? You need so, seven total seven. damage. And then I'm going to jack in. For the other two and destroy him. Amazing. <laughs> Boom. Just done. We all get two, Shazam. which is fantastic. Oh, that's worth eight. Yeah, that's huge. So we all get, yeah, we all get two. Fant wow. Fantastic. Yep, I like it. I like it. So that's way out of my normal playing style. Um, but I, I think I'm starting to like it. You know, Jeremy and I had a couple of conversations this weekend about my struggles in playing a cooperative game, which says a lot about my personality and a lot about Jeremy's personality, yeah. um, in that he... I'm going to introduce another clip, aren't I? Probably. <laughs> um, in that he is really... He understands things on a level that I <laughs> never will, I think, period, end of sentence. Yeah, yeah. Um, but especially in this game, you know, he can look at a card and instantly know the five ways that you can do something, mm -hmm. whereas for me it takes 25 minutes to figure it out. And I get frustrated with being told what to do really under any circumstances. Right. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can affect. So thinking th through that stuff is not ever a bad idea. I mean, Jeremy just happens to be um, ridiculous and can see it happen before it happens. So, uh, yeah, we have one turn where Matt had uh, two katanas and he was I mean, he was focused on his objective, which was hard. 
but I, I realize I'm like, well, if you spread the damage out, a lot more can happen. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> we've got a clip of that, and I, we're going to cut it down a little bit to some of the thinking that went on, but you'll definitely see just how much, how much action can happen in one turn when you really think it out. All right, so I've got a lot of cards here. I'm, I can wreck this gargoyle, these katanas and everything. What do you think? Katanas. All right. Um, so this guy needs eight damage, right? He needs eight. So you play yeah. both katanas for six and then assist for two. Because they affect each and, other. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that's eight. He's dead. Yep. So do that. Yeah, okay, I'll do that first. That's all right. So one, so two, three. Well, one, two, and then it goes Oops. three, four, five, six, because that's an so other that's weapon six card damage. Two more. Two, and then you negotiate for the two so generic. Eight. So He's eight dead. total damage plus two guns. This guy's dead. We'll just flip him over for now and distribute afterwards. So now, so these so are those gone. guns are still three. That's discarded. So these guns are all still three total damage. So yes. if you focus some damage over here. So why are they still three total damage? Because it's the katanas are for each weapon card for each other weapon card you played this turn. So actually, you know what? Let's keep these all out. Here, let's just do this. Yeah, just this guy is totally dead because of that, and now I'm going to... This guy's still worth three because these katanas have been played earlier, so I'm going to use one of these. One of those is going to go to waste for now. Uh, and then I'll play this green also on that green. same spot, and then boom! That's He's totally dead. dead. Okay. And now I've got six damage left for these guns, so I'm going to go three, six, and you still have your negotiate. Eight. Seven, eight. So that's seven... Eight, eight damage we did with one with at least one gun. So that one's also hit. <laughs> so that was an insane turn. I think we're ready to move on. <laughs> so these are my cards. That's your card. That's ridiculous. That was a super turn. So now we gotta get money for this. So it's six total money, so I get two. And then you, this guy was also two. six. That guy was also six. He died two. Oh wow. So totals is four, four, two, two. Yeah. Cause like I was the one doing the killing on both. Yep, got it. Dude, that was so awesome. Put this guy here, you put him that you discard him too. Yep. All right, so before I buy, I gotta take my one damage because I didn't kill this guy, and now I'm gonna buy stuff, and I have enough to buy. Oh, I didn't draw yet. Whoops. Let me do that. Ooh, mana and street smarts, whatever. But five, I'm gonna spend. I gotta buy covering fire because that is such an amazing ability. It's replaced by. Oh wait. Smarts. Even less. We played two negotiates. That costs you two less. I. Uh, is it an yep. assist? Yep. Oh! No <laughs> way. Take two money back. Take two money back. <laughs> <laughs> I have three. You can still buy your whip. And oh, yeah. two more for a monofilament whip. Even though I have the lowest health in the game right now, that's a terrible decision. No, dude, you can shock them. And it's replaced with the death touch. Awesome. And oh I can buy that on my turn. Yay! Those combos like that are wow. so insane. Holy crap. What it a, only what took turn. like 10 minutes. Yeah, Wait. that was like a 10 minute turn. No big deal. Why can't we pull that stuff off in other games that we play? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yeah, it took us a few uh, few go throughs to figure out to how to get all that damage dealt. Yeah. yeah. But that was a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. I that's it's those crazy. those turns like that. That's just some of my favorite parts of the game. Is that this is this is very much it, it's a card game and and we were talking about the theme earlier and how it's it doesn't super feel like we're shadow run universe people doing a lot of stuff. It's it's really about solving a puzzle. Like granted, like the theme is there. It's really cool. It's on all the cards. But it's really like solving this puzzle yeah. together as a team. And that like that turns a perfect example where we just I mean, it's not so much I mean, yeah, you could I guess maybe have one person drive the turn, but but really there's so much going on that it's hard for one person to just basically call all the shots. Like there's so many things that can happen. And that term is just a great example. Yeah. Like I'm thinking, oh, I can do this, but then you're like, whoa, hang on. Yeah. What about this? And then, you know, Isaac could have an assist card to throw in there. And like it's just there's so many cool team yeah. elements that can come into it at any time. I think the really cool part is too like that was one complete way of playing it, but then there's another turn. Uh, I think it was Isaac's turn where he he drew a card which would reveal a card, and it, it really ended up on luck of the draw, but it fell no, into place yeah. really, yeah. really well. Yeah, let's, let's check that out too. That's another perfect example. Hit your guy with stun bolt and see what number you get, I think. And then go from there. Stun bolt. So I flip. Oof. Oh, nice. you don't four. Get play. It's just yeah, you just reveal yeah, so that goes back. the cost though. So, so that does five damage, including one lightning bolt and a five. Can I get past the? I don't have. You have a green. Oh, remember, it's, I remember I it's all green. the cards you play total. I have a blue draw card. You can draw. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I forgot about that. You can draw that covering. What was that card you just revealed? You can now draw that. And then discard one of your street smarts. Yeah, All so right. go ahead and play clairvoyance. Play clairvoyance. Okay. Yes. You can take. Um, yeah. Yeah. So draw that card. Wait, what does clairvoyance do? I'm sorry. Can uh, you read it? Clairvoyance. Um, assist. The current runner draws one card, then discards one card, and damage blue. So it goes into your hand. Oh. And you discard so that one. goes your hand. Discard one of your reds. Yeah. There you 
And then now you can play that. So you've got, right now you've got five from this little, you got five, six, six and seven. You got seven and one green. You got and seven I still need a black. Green. So you can coordinate attack with Matt. Yeah, you could. I can rock that thing. Yep. Coordinated attack. So Matt, you draw one first. Boom. What can you it? read coordinated attack? I'm okay, choose yeah. another player, uh, runner. That runner draws one card, then immediately plays a card. Boom. Draw a card. Oh, a gun. And Just what if... Oh, I can't use monofilament whip. It's play your card. other coordinated attack. <laughs> I can. <laughs> yes, you can. But we still need a black. <laughs> but, uh, alright, so I will play a quick shot. Bang. Oh, I'll put it here. What does that do? Bang. It's just one. It's a one damage. Okay. Get one damage gun. black. Okay. So black. that's, so that was, five, six, seven, eight, not nine, ten. Ten, ten damage. And um, a green, so, a blue, and a black. So all the four, five, need. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. And one more generic damage. Eleven. Eleven. Boom. <laughs> that brings it down to a gun. Which Matt has. No, I can't use it on, on turn. his turn. On his turn, which will bring me down, down to o only one damage. <laughs> Left. Uh, it also, one that health. thing looked so daunting, and we just wrecked it. We just it. wrecked it. Just oh, wrecked. coordinated attack. Oh, I know. <laughs> we really coordinated. We did. That. We coordinated that time. Yeah, so that was a turn where I think Isaac played like a stun bolt where he would reveal the card, mm -hmm. which was a five cost card. So he did six damage. Four cost. Four cost. Four cost yeah. plus yeah. the one. Attack. Um, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I have clairvoyance, I can make you draw that card. <laughs> oh, so good. So you got the damage from the cost, and yeah. then we're still able to play it, which made you play, I forget, Matt's card or something. Yeah, we went all over the place. I didn't even realize that effect could help in that manner, but that's yeah. exactly what you want to be able right. to do. You want to be able to draw, and I, I didn't quite, because there are some cards like, have this card and then discard this card, and being able to just see what's on the top of your deck can really lead to combos like that that are just yeah. make it, it makes the game a lot more exciting mm -hmm. and obviously can get you through a lot better yeah. <laughs> to the end. That's another strength of the death touch card. That's the one where you draw, th you reveal three cards and you can put them back in any order. Exactly. So if you combo that as well with it, you could. Yeah. It's a lot of co a lot of cool combos with the reveal that you, even after our twelve games we haven't run into that much. So. Yeah. Well, I think uh, at least from even this weekend when we were playing a lot, uh, we were a lot better at buying cards than we were. We were kind of sticking to, you know, buy your own color, doesn't really matter. And we've kind of mixed it up and fi figured out how the combos really work and really come together. Um you know, everybody sh everybody should have a sniper rifle. Yes. <laughs> sniper rifle is no hands downside. down my favorite card. <laughs> so cool. There's no downside. Uh, right, and everybody should have a coordinated attack, and everybody should ha have at least one assist card, if not more, by the end of yeah, the game. Assist cards are the best. I, they're assist just cards. Like, are oh awesome. yeah, and it it really it brings up the excitement of co-op. Totally. It is totally. Yeah. It is where this game begins and ends with co-op. Yep. yep. You make you make some really good points, Isaac. I, I think I like what you said before about uh, about recognizing our color and, and combos. Mm -hmm. Once it, there's a fair amount of nuance to the game. One of the more straightforward things that you learn after just a couple of games is, yeah, I'm playing the Street Samurai role. It doesn't. I don't have to necessarily play the game going for all Street Samurai color cards. Yeah. There's weapon cards that match my my role. But that doesn't mean I should just buy all the weapon cards. That's actually not a good way to play. The, the way to play is to look for the weapons, and it's not that hard to figure out. Look yeah. for the weapons that give you bonuses based on cards that you, you have in your deck. So there's cards that will give you the katana, for example, which we showed. <laughs> and that gives you bonus damage on all weapons you play that turn. So, of course, the Street Samurai, because they start the game with more black cards in their deck, more of the, the gun cards in their deck, that's a better card for them to buy. There's another one where you like, draw the cards on the top of your deck and then reveal blue cards. That's better yeah. for the mage to play. And there's there's cards like that for each of the different factions or each of the different um, like classes. But that's it. There's some cards that are just good for everyone, even if it's a blue card. Clairvoyance is good for any class. It's, yeah. it's, it has an assist. I mean, most of the assist cards are just good for anyone. Yeah. You shouldn't be held back by color. But yeah, it was back as, as far as the colors go. I think it's cool because there's still enough cards where like the blue card goes... like That blue card, like Death Touch, goes to the blue guy because it works best. It still makes you feel like... Oh, I'm the mage. Great, I'm special. the yeah. But there's still important tactical decisions to make on a regular basis. One card, for example, is is called Icon Grab. It's a green card, and it rewards you. Basically, it gives you any icon. It gives you one one green damage, and then a damage of any other color. 
if you played another. if you have played another another green card, another hacking card that turn. So there's times when I look down, I've got a hacking card in my hand, just my one generic one that I started the game with, even though I'm a street samurai. And then I'm looking at the icon grab, and we're looking around the board, going, "We have no way to kill that obstacle if I don't pull this 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 icon grab right now." And even though that's not the best card to use for me, you got to think tactically in the moment and just be like, "This is way better yeah. than us." Losing another round, adding another card to the crossfire deck, making the game even harder. But just yeah. finish it off. That even, sometimes you just do that. Pri yeah. Priority buying in the moment right. is so yeah, it's awesome. So key. It, so it's key. a key. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, another example. A few times there was a couple of really basic cards. Yeah. We just bought them up because, like, well, hopefully we'll get the assist card or something else that we'll need. So I bought a one card, a one card. I think one round I had like eight cards in my hand. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's a perfect example. That's not even a bad thing to right. do. Like yeah. even though you're getting some basic cards and you could you could argue filling up your deck with garbage, you have no hand limit. So you're just sitting here with this massive hand of cards. That means the next turn you play, you're gonna crush with it. Yeah. Yeah, you got a really good turn then, and then I mean it starts to slow down later, but if if it's what you really need at the time and you you're gonna die or advance the crossfire level some more, it's it's worth the sacrifice, I guess. I thought I was going to have like an anxiety attack when I played this game for the first time, and I saw the stickers, and I saw the little karma marker spots. And then I went, and I opened the... Uh, I got the character expansion for this at Gen Con. It basically just comes with a giant pack of four more copies of every character in the game, nice. and another pack of the exact same hundred stickers that come oh, with the base game. Yeah. So, worst case scenario, I go out for like 10, 15 bucks, and I buy another hundred stickers, another just ton of character sheets, and we start over. Like, it's... There's so many that come in the game... I don't care. Like, I mean, how, I'm not going to have 10 people playing this game. I'm not going to yeah. run out. And even then, there's there's enough variety, especially from having two sets of full stickers of the game. There's enough variety that we can all choose different things, have a lot of variety, maybe scrap it, start over, have new characters. Yeah. I, I just try to not be crazy about this game, and so far I've been happy with it. Yeah. I, I have no problem writing marker on my sheets. It's This feels playable like, like a PC game is. Yeah. Like, you want to keep playing and you want to keep leveling up. Even though, like, in a PC game, you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Yes. That's okay, because now you have cool new toys to do it with. But the difficulty of this game is, is difficult enough that yeah. it's fun to cooperate and right. collaborate with friends to solve the puzzle again. And that's the same yeah. thing with, you, you know, like, yeah. MMOs and stuff. Like, that's why I still play Warcraft actively. Yes. That, <laughs> that's going to be on camera. You don't want anybody to know that. That's embarrassing, <laughs> that's embarrassing for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but you you hinted at a good thing there. That this game is is scalable, and yeah. there's there's a there's like four different scenarios that come with the game, and there's uh, and there's two additional ones that they put online. They're supposed to be putting out more, but the scenarios um, the, we can play the same scenario. We've played pretty much Crossfire like twelve times because it's just really fun. We've played the other one once, I think. We played yeah. Extraction once. They're all they, it changes the game a decent amount, but the core game is the same. You're playing the objects to try to kind of solve the puzzle of the different objects on the board. But it's it's fun to just play this and get these new abilities. And when you have these new abilities, it doesn't make the game easier necessarily because well, it does make the game a easier. Bit. But the game has built-in rules for you to add additional difficulty to the game because once you hit a certain point, you stop gaining experience yeah. points. You start you start getting less and less as you get stronger. You get down to zero. Yeah. You get down to zero. So you have to keep making the game harder by adding more crossfire cards at the start, adding more object or adding more obstacles. So there's a lot of that stuff. Mm. And the last thing I want to touch upon is player count. We've played this with a mix of two to four players the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think it plays, I, th I think it plays well with any number, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. It's played well it's with different. all. It's almost a completely different game, really. Yeah. Yeah. What was the thing you pointed out? We, we played we played two this weekend, and you immediately noticed it as we started playing. Oh, money? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the money thing is huge, because the way you distribute the money, um, so say if the monster gave you six money, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you're playing with two players, it's... Three to each. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot more. You get a lot more from the kill. Yeah, we cycled monsters. through the deck a lot. Mm -hmm. when we were doing the Buy a lot of cards. Yeah. So why? Yeah, why you have less people out? Why you have less people <laughs> helping you fight? You've got a lot more, a ton more money. You're getting more cards to add your deck. You almost have more tactical decisions made in terms of building your deck as opposed to helping out other teammates and finishing off their objectives. Yeah. So yeah, they play differently. Yeah. It's surprisingly good despite all player counts, and it's constantly hard, and you lose a lot. But when you do win, it's awesome. Cool. Well, I definitely think we've covered this game. That was yeah. super fun. Thank you, guys. This is an awesome game. I'm I'm looking forward to leveling up. Yeah. Doing a little bit of grinding. Yeah. A little bit of a little bit of grinding. Grind sure. Darn right. We gotta escort awesome. some people too. That's right. We gotta do a <laughs> we, oh, yeah. There's a dragon. We gotta fight the dragon. We gotta I'm get gonna... seventy karma to fight the dragon oh. first. So that's gonna be a while. Yep. 
What are you guys doing for the rest of the night? You want to just all nighter this? <laughs> all nighter. Extra life marathon in two months. Check yes. Out. Oh, Boom. We're gonna right 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 right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if we can beat the dragon, we want a thousand dollars for Boston Children's Hospital. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you again soon. We all just waved. <laughs> that was like really. You want to lead us into this one, Isaac? Uh, sure. And by that I mean... Uh, what? <laughs> oh, I wasn't prepared for that at all. And by that I mean... Crossfire! Don't get caught up in the... We just did, though. Don't sing anymore. We're going to have to pay somebody. <laughs> Sorry. Do you think anybody owns the rights to that still?